Hello guys, it's Nuclear Softworks here today, and today I'm going to show you how to set up a DNS server without a domain controller. So I'm going to click add a new role, I'm going to click next, DNS server, I'm going to click next, wait for it to do its management system here, this dollar comes up, you just want to click next, I'm going to create a basic forward zone recommended for small networks. Forward and reverse lookup zones are recommended for larger networks, and root hints only is recommended for advanced users. So we're going to click create forward lookup zone. The server maintains the zone. I'm going to type in ptwisted.com. Do not allow dynamic updates. I don't. Um, we're not going to forward queries if um, there's a current if this DNS server cannot handle uh, queries into it like you can't look up an address it's going to go to one of these servers to find the address if this server fails to find that address or a host name it's going to go here if this can't find the address or host name the address or host name either does not exist or it's unable to find it we're not going to forward queries now it's done I'm just going to click finish And I'm going to click finish. Just discard that error message I got because there was already a record on the server already. So here's what I got. I have a dev, which is a host A record. To add a host A record, you right click and go host new host A. And basically, this is what the. Oops, the the uh, address would be, and this is the qualified domain name, which this is what you'll type into your web browser. And then here we have the IP address of the working server. Now, reverse lookup zones take IP addresses and return host names. Forward lookup zones take host names and give IP addresses. So if I were to type in dev.teamtwisted.com, into my browser, I would connect to my HTTP server on this machine because this is this computer's host address. If I have an HTTP server that's on a different location on my network, I can simply just go 192.168.1 and then the address of the server and click OK. And then when you type in dev.teamtwisted, it'll go to that web server whenever a web browser or system detects this. If I type in a IP address to my web browser, it'll return the host name. So I'm going to go back up to here. I'm going to click dev. I'm going to apply. I'm going to apply again. And there's still no host record here. So I'm going to create a new pointer. And the new pointer is going to point to dev.teamtwisted.com and I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to restart my server now. Then you have to wait approximately 30 seconds for the changes to take effect. So I'm going to go ahead and Connect to it, dev.teamtwisted.com, and you'll notice we've got the same thing. It's pointing at 192.168.1.1. So if we go to command prompt on the client's computer, one thing you have to make sure when you're on the client's computer is the client's network configuration has to point towards the DNS server. So I'm going to click Network and Sharing Center local area connection. I'm going to hit properties, internet protocol version 4, and you'll see my, my DNS server's address here and then Google servers down here. If my server fails to find the name, it will go to Google. If Google fails to find it, the web browser will return an error code. So in order for the client to connect to the website on the server, it has to point to it unless the DNS host name is outside your network. Once again, for website hosting, 
you have to use a domain name registrar or it won't work. I already covered that in the past two videos, but I'm just saying it again. Probably people who haven't watched the other two videos, in order to host um, a website, you need a domain name which you have to pay for. You can't use your domain name inside your network. You can if you're using a local network but you want your friends to connect to it. You have to have a domain name registrar to contact your DNS server to retrieve the data required for the outside world to connect to your incoming and outgoing connections inside your house. So, the ports for our DNS server are 53 and then a source port going out could be any number. So, since we're connected to my server, I'm going to type an MS lookup dev.tutwisted.com and you see it gives me my server's address. When I type this in my web browser, the web browser goes to this IP address and now it's the data. When you type an NS lookup, we're using the dev.teamtwisted.com as the primary server and we're using dev.teamtwisted.com as the return address. So I type in NS lookup twisted.com whoops it gives me the same thing because the domain is registered on the server now how the server's networking is wired up is the same thing as we did on the Windows 7 computer we do in here except we use the internal DNS server to send queries. But I'm going to put Google's, Google's DNS servers in here anyways, just to be sure. I'm going to hit OK, close, close. I'm going to go to my web browser, I'm going to close it. And that is pretty much it. If you want to have more than one host name, see we got dev.teamtwisted. I could just add another A record, then I can have dev2.teamtwisted and have it point to a different address and use the create associated point record to get the um, host name from the IP address. And that is pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the description and have a good night.